This is why you don't go to the home of someone that you're divorcing, thinking you're going to be able to talk things out. Temperatures rise, emotions run high. You're going to say things you don't mean. You're going to do things you wish you hadn't done. You might punch a wall, right? It wasn't like she was in danger in this rage. He just hits the wall. Who cannot understand that emotion? Thing is, all she's got to do is snap a picture of that caved in wall and you're going to see it in one of the pleadings, how you're a danger and how there's maybe even domestic violence, right? Not to say that domestic violence, of course, that that stuff does happen, but you want to be really careful not to put yourself in the position to create evidence for the other side. Because, you know, look, there's three sides to every story, right? Yours, mine, and the truth. And we, you know, from watching that video, if, if all of divorce situations, we could just have a video, kind of get the bigger context, the whole thing would be different. But you don't. You get her version, his version, and then the judge or the jury is supposed to figure out the truth. And a lot of that stuff between these two people could be taken out of context. Like, I hope you would die. I wake up every day thinking about if I knew our son would be okay, I'd want you dead. Is that a threat? Written out in a pleading, typed out by a lawyer, might sound like a threat. So that's why you've got to be so careful. In the middle of the divorce is not the time to try to get closure. I'm sorry, it's just not. Because what you say can and will be used against you. Even more so what you do. So don't go over to their house, trying to make things right, trying to hash it out, you're not going to get what you came for and you may make matters worse.